Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have an interesting episode for you guys that I think a lot of you want to stick around for. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, let me get into this topic here. Now, all of you know um, that I'm a huge fan of Giannis, right? I'm a fan of Giannis primarily because I feel like he's just one of these guys that, for whatever reason, was being hated on. Um, for a good amount of time. So I just decided to support him kind of similarly to the way that I believe Shannon Sharp supports Giannis Antetokounmpo and Undisputed, right? I think he supports him because Skip is so criti critical of him and he's forced to become a supporter of his, kind of similarly to the way when Skip used to call Kawhi Leonard number two and then Shannon Sharp started sticking up for him and he started using the term, you know, Kawhi with those virtual souls and all of that different stuff, right? That's the first. And the second reason I like Giannis is because he's a very hard worker, very, very hard worker. And, um, I think he's playing basketball for the right reasons, and I think he's a good role model to younger guys looking to go into the NBA because here's a guy that's really, uh, you know, came into the league and made the most of his opportunity, which I think ultimately uh, is your goal. You know, you want to make the most of it and ultimately try to win, right? That's why you're there. Uh, but yesterday, <clears throat> I was watching the game, game four, between the Boston Celtics and the uh, Milwaukee Bucks, and I couldn't help but think to myself, you know, I wish Giannis um, would improve other aspects of his basketball game. Specifically, I wish Giannis had developed a consistent and reliable mid-range jumper. Not because I want him to play like Kevin Durant. No. But because I believe that it would make it very difficult for teams to pick on him on the defensive side of the floor, right? Um, it really bothered me watching the defense dare Giannis to shoot the basketball on a continuous basis. And every time Giannis took a long three-point shot or a mid-range jump shot, um, Stan Van Gundy, who was one of the people calling the game, said that every time Giannis does that, he is actually doing the Boston Celtics a favor. And I believe uh, that that aspect of his game uh, is the one thing that is really holding Giannis back and is one of the reasons um, why I would always take, and I've always said it, I'm never going to come off of this, why I would always take Kawhi Leonard over, over every single uh, basketball player going into the playoffs. There's no one in the world that I would rather have than a healthy Kawhi Leonard going into the playoffs. Why? Because Kawhi Leonard is lethal from all levels on the court, and he plays with a tremendous amount of physicality as well. So Kawhi is not one of these guys that you can rough up or shade to various spots on the floor. He's very hard to game plan for. And it's one of the reasons why the defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, said he is probably the hardest basketball player to guard in the NBA. That's what Marcus Smart said. That's a defensive player of the year. Um, you know, a, a, you know, a wing defender, but also due to the fact that he can hit him, hit a hit a reliable mid range jump shot. He's always able to put defenses in jeopardy. There's no spot on the floor. There's no there's not one single type of defense you can play with Kawhi Leonard because of his ability to get to his spots using his footwork and his and his ball handling ability. Um I just think that Kawhi Leonard is just one of these guys you can't stop in the playoffs when he when he's rolling. And um, that was something that he developed over time. And when I looked at Michael Jordan and LeBron James, retrospectively, when they came into the NBA, they were slashers. They were primarily slashers. But over time, Jordan became the best mid-range player in all of basketball. And he mastered the fadeaway jump shot. That was his go-to move. If he needed a basket, he could get a shot. LeBron James, when he came into the NBA, he could not shoot. He was, I mean, and we put up a poll yesterday on the channel asking a question in their primes. Who was the better attacker You know, at the basket? Was it Giannis Antetokounmpo? Is it Giannis Antetokounmpo or was it LeBron? And I think the majority of people said Giannis. I think it's LeBron. If you go back and watch LeBron James play, especially early in his career, when he was attacking the basket, first of all, LeBron is ambidextrous. He's, he writes with his left hand, but he shoots with his right hand. 
LeBron could finish under the basket with English as good as anybody could at that size of six foot eight. LeBron, when he used to go to the basket, he was like a one man fast break. But because he had such a sweet touch, for him to be successful, he didn't really necessarily need to dunk on you or get to the rim for layup. He could lay the ball off the glass. And he, I mean, he, he had some spectacular finishes. But even LeBron over time, he improved his jump shot. When LeBron came into the NBA, think about this. His first season, if you look at the advanced shooting stats, he was shooting 33% from three to, from three to 10 feet out. That's, the, that's what he was shooting from that distance. And he was shooting 31%. Think about this. LeBron was shooting 31% from 10 to 16 feet. That was what he was shooting. By his seventh year in the NBA, over time, he worked on his game. He was shooting 40% from 3 to 10 feet and over 40% from 10 to 16 feet. He turned himself into a good enough mid-range jump shooter where defenses could no longer sag off of him. So he was a threat pretty much at every single level. He didn't need to rely on um, three-pointers. But from that aspect of the floor, the defenses could not give him that shot because he was going to make a good amount to hurt you. Whereas in the case of Giannis, they're just daring him to shoot. It's the same thing with Jordan. Jordan improved his basketball game tremendously, as I said before. If you go look at his stats, uh, you can see that Jordan was able to actually improve um, you know, those, those percentages. Now, if we, if we move back to Giannis, as I said, Giannis is one of the hardest working NBA players of all time. You can just look at his physique. You don't get that physique from not working hard. Giannis, I think, put over 40 pounds of muscle on his body. That's a really hard, hard thing to do, right? It's a very hard thing to do. That's number one. When Giannis came into the NBA, he was scoring 6.8 points per game. Last season, he was scoring. He's been scoring about 27 points per game for the last five, six years, right? At least 26 for the last five, six years or five years. Giannis has really improved his basketball game. And to that point, in terms of the shooting from those various uh, distances, Last year, believe it or not, Giannis shot 40% from 3 to 10 and 40% from 10 to 16. So Giannis himself improved. He improved over time. But if you look at the playoffs, he's shooting 34% from 3 to 10 feet. And he's shooting 28% from 10 to 16 feet. And his three-point shooting is abysmal. But Giannis doesn't need to make threes. The same way Jordan didn't need to focus on threes. And the same way LeBron didn't necessarily need to focus on threes. Giannis by himself, if he had improved his game even further, I believe that Giannis Antetokounmpo by himself is good enough to beat the Boston Celtics. I believe that. Without Chris Middleton, Giannis is good enough to beat that team. But this weakness that he has is holding him back in certain spots. And if you watch that game yesterday, even if you're a Giannis supporter or not, if you just looked at that game with some objective glasses, you would see that Giannis had some deficiencies in this basketball game from the offensive side of the floor. And it bothered me. It bothered me. And for him to get into that classroom with Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and all of these guys, he's going to continue. He's going to need to continue to improve because those guys, they became so good that you literally couldn't stop them. You couldn't game plan for them. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about they built a wall for Jordan or LeBron? They did that early in LeBron's career. You can't do that now. Right. So. That's the one thing. Now, um, I still think they can win this series, and I still think they're going to win this series. But I just think it would be even easier for Giannis to secure these victories if his basketball game was even more developed. And this is coming. This is a this. I'm just I'm just I'm speaking from a constructive criticism uh, angle. I'm not bashing him, but I think it's something that needs to be said if we're truly going to be honest about things, right? So, these are my thoughts. I think Giannis is definitely improving, but um, I think for him to get into that top five category, um, he's going to need to get better because as, as, as his athleticism wanes, he's going to be, he's going to need to become a much more technical, uh, basketball player. So these are my thoughts and opinions of what I want to know from you guys. What do you think? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. 
Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day and catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.